And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're taking a look at a game called Race to the North Pole, which really, I like the cover of this. It shows people fighting, they're trying to get to the North Pole. The actual racing to find the North and the South Poles was not uh, nearly as an exciting thing. Uh, in fact, some very depressing uh, real life stories have come from these things. But here you're doing it, you're having fun, and this board has a rotating board, a board that moves around. Sounds fun, let's look. In this game, players are going to be taking four different pawns and they're going to be taking them from their base camp and trying to get to the North Pole. There's an entrance here, although that entrance could possibly move as the game goes by. And in fact, the whole game board can move. They have a, a, this piece here, I guess, is, uh, keeps track of who's first. And you put your finger in these and you can spin the game board and the game board's gonna move and you know, there's these clear plastic pieces here underneath the game board. Um, these pieces fit into these holes so that you can stand on top of the piece and they fit in pretty well. They don't come out too easily. The board itself fits together well. I wouldn't have minded had it been a little bit flatter. Maybe that will come over time. One thing I did like about the components in this game is that this little piece here, it shows you throwing it away. I love that. There are lots of little things you need to punch out that look like you might need to keep them. But with this token on them, I knew, or this symbol on them, I knew I had to throw them away. Now, players have three cards in front of them. And these cards come from a deck of cards. And on a player's turn, they're going to play one of these cards. And this card essentially shows how you can move. So I can bring someone out to base camp, for example. But then I can move in any direction. Now, when you're on the board and when you are moving, you can't move through these ice cracks here. Now, You'll notice here there's like an ice crack corner, so I also could not move from this spot to here because there's ice cracks in both corners. But I could move from here to here because there's only one ice crack there. So you have to be careful when you get up to the middle where I'm trying to go. I can use any card with a boot on it, which this one has, to move on there as long as the direction is facing me. If it shows an orange guy in your card, you can move into a spot where somebody else is, which essentially kicks them back to their own base camp. Players are trying to get all their pawns to the North Pole. When you get there, you'll put one of your pawns here. If you're, if you're playing with more players, you might start with some pawns already on the board. You'll play with fewer pawns that way. So players are going to pick the card that they use. Most cards are movement or they're an attack movement, which shows the orange guy on them. Um, this card here essentially acts as any card on the board. And there's also some ranged attack where you can basically just take somebody else off the board um, without moving yourself. And then there's a double movement card, which lets you move two spaces in one direction. So players are going to play a movement card in their turn. At the end of their turn, they'll replace cards in their area. When players play a card, it's going to be put on a pile because we're counting the number of dots that are on that card. When there is a certain number of dots, and that number of dots is going to depend on how many players are in the game, then a storm happens. Whenever a storm happens, we're going to take a look at the storm pile here. And we will, whatever it shows on the top is the way that the board rotates. So in this one, it shows that it's going to rotate like this. Um, then this one here would rotate 180 degrees in the other direction. And when you rotate, your base camp is still going to be in front of you, but your people are going to be all over the board in different spots as the board rotates. That's pretty much the whole game with the exception of these tokens. When you land on these spots, you get an ice mask token. Uh, this one's a blank one, you can do it yourself. Um, but they have a lot of these blank things in this game, a lot of blank stuff. Uh, but here's a backpack, which gives me a special ability. The special abilities are all listed on a reference sheet. There's also a pile of these ice masks here. Anytime you take another player out, you'll get to do a special ability. So that backpack, for example, lets you store a card and play it later instead of one that you have in front of you. The igloo here lets you put underneath a pawn. That pawn can't be ambushed um, until they move away from the igloo. And then there's ones that, like this compass here lets me rotate the North Pole to any position I want it to be in. 
Each player is going to start with a couple of these because they each have their own ice team that they're part of. And each of these ice team, like for example, here's Chris, Jolly, Sparkles, Rudolphius, and Twinklefig. Each of them also has a symbol on them. You can have these symbols on the pawns, but you don't really need these symbols on the pawns. It doesn't really mean anything, and you can not even see them on the black pawns anyway. So each player will start with some equipment. Down here, this is where you keep your equipment that you get as time goes by, and then you're just going to go. So you play a card, see if a storm happens, and then go to the middle. There is an app that comes with the game. This is going to be a little bit hard to see here. Um, but this race to the North Pole with a weather forecast where you can basically pick how many people are playing. And every time you play a card, you do this. Instead of counting the dots, this will essentially just randomly draw them for you until a storm hits. And that tells you what kind of storm hits. And there are other things that you can play here in Expedition Shop, how to have random turns, additional turns. It's not a necessary app at all. I wouldn't go out of my way to use it. The weather thing was kind of cool. It kept us from counting the dots, but that's it. That's Race to the North Pole. Now I know that my audience for these videos is full of many people who like in-depth strategic games. Well, to those folks, I'm gonna say, this is probably not for you. This is essentially a take that game, a game where like, ha ha ha, do stuff to other players as a board game. Because that's the way the game is gonna work. Players are playing cards, moving around, then the board spins, and someone hits you and makes you go back to start. Your base camp is safe, but that's it. Everywhere else is dangerous. So then you move here, and then we say, oh, well, Bob has three people in place, so let's get one of his characters. Oh, Susan has three people in place now. Now we gotta get her, she's the closest one. And you go and you're hitting the Bob, then Susan, then Sally, then, then Dan, and you're just going back and forth, whoever's the closest, trying to play cards against them until someone finally sneaks their way through. That doesn't detract that the game is fun. It's fun to spin the board. It's fun to play these cards. It's fun when that storm comes. Sometimes there's even a tile when you flip it, it's, it causes a storm. Uh, the, the artwork is fun and the, the game is easy. It's not that long of a game. Uh, the box here says 45 minutes, but you probably can easily play this in half an hour. Uh, and because of that, I approve the game because I enjoyed playing it. Now I did have to kind of Go to a different level when playing this. Just say, hey, we're playing kind of a silly game. We're going to see what happens here. We're going to move across the board and explore. And, ah, ha, ha, you got me. Now I'm going to get you. Oh, the board just rotated and all my plans went for now. Oh, you just rotated the North Pole. But I think a lot of families will like it because of that reason. The theme is something different. It has a feel of a race. The cards are easy to understand and do. Most of them are the same. You can even take out the attacking and play a peaceful game, in which case it it's really too boring to play at that point. So that attacking needs to be there, getting the different equipment. Oh, I can do this this turn, I have a dog. You might as well use the equipment as soon as you can because uh, the game, like I said, the game doesn't last that long. So a couple small production things, like I said, the board warps just the slightest bit. Uh, but other than, and those stickers for the pawns is a worthless waste of time. But other than that, it, it, it came out well. The, it includes a, a guide that tells you what all the different things are and how to move. It's really nice. The app is totally not necessary, but it exists. So if you want to use it for different things, you can. So for families, this is one you should check out. Race to the North Pole. Dice Tower Judgment approved as a very light game. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door! Boop. Boop.